Well, good evening, ladies, lasses, and lassos. Welcome to the click. Merry New Year and Happy Christmas. Today, we're going to do something absolutely dandy, fine, delicious. Hold on! <laughs> That's right, you do smell amazing, isn't that right, emotional support demon? Oh yes indeed, it's only available for a few more days, oh my god. Is it gonna be the best-selling plushie by the time this video goes up? It's like a hundred away at the time of this recording, it's absolutely insane. It best-selling plushie, all time on make. <sighs> Thank you, wow, it is uh, mind-blowing, and that's not even the exaggeration. Thank you, um, it really does mean a lot, I'm so excited about this. Anyway, today, we are gonna look at r slash true off my chest, which is just spicy stories anonymously posted on the interwebs, and it's time to spill the tea, sis, yes, or in this case, spill the coffee. Enjoy. <sighs> oh, Santa Claus, oh, Santa Claus. <clears throat> r slash true off my chest. I put cat toys in my girlfriend's shoes, but let her think it's the cat. Very occasionally, our cat will put a toy in one of our shoes. My girlfriend really loves it when she finds one. It seriously makes her morning. I usually get up for work when she is still sleeping. And one morning, I was putting my shoes on and decided to put a cat toy in her shoe. She later sent me an excited text about finding the toy. So it's been about two years now and I put a cat toy in her shoe every few times a week. I just love how happy she is when she finds them. Sometimes the cat will stick one in there himself and she'll find two. I love them so much. This is so- Oh my god! And people say lies are evil. This- You see, lies can be so amazingly wholesome and cute. What is the opposite of a white lie? Like a harmless lie? This is a golden lie. I love golden lies. Thank you so much. This is too sweet. I'm gonna start off this video with diabetes. Oh no. I found out that my boyfriend of two years is married and has kids. I'm showing myself to his family tomorrow at his church. Oh, so much for the <laughs> wholesomeness. The contrast between these posts are amazing. I have been seeing this guy, Adam, 32, for two years. He's from another town, but visits me on weekends. I never met his family, friends, or even been to his town. I know that he works at the church, and he takes pride in that. Oh, you heard that, demon? It's a very holy relationship, I guess, and the whole unholy demon. Three weeks ago, I found out that he's actually married and has two kids. I was devastated and in a state of disbelief, but most of all, I was mad. Especially after I confirmed this via his wife's social media account. We're still talking and haven't broken up with him yet. I planned and decided to show myself his family on Sunday at his church and let him know that he used me and took advantage. I plan on ending it right there and then. I'm currently in his town staying at a hotel. I am doing this tomorrow and no one knows except myself. He's still texting me lies, thinking that I'm stupid or ignorant. I feel terrible, but something's pushing me to do this don't know if it's anger or feeling bad for his wife and kids. I just, I'm not gonna lie. I'm worried this might backfire at me at some point, but I have nothing to lose. I just feel like I need to get my respect and dignity back after being lied to and fooled for two years? Oh yeah, it's two. Oh my god. I thought it was, you know, a two week old fling or something. Then it's like, okay, this is this. Two years? Oh my god. Imagine going out with someone for two years, and it's like an on-off relationship, a bit long distance, but you think, you know, you're kind of cool, you know, oh, they're obviously focused on their career or something, you find out they have a family. I hope it doesn't affect the kids. That's the only thing I'm skeptical about. Like, he obviously deserves to have a scene made and be embarrassed because he's been living a double life for two years and breaking hearts in the process, but please think of the kids first. They are innocent in all of this, and I have seen it many times in my own life where kids are kind of stuck in the middle between nasty breakups and that kind of stuff, so keep in mind that it's no longer only about you. Um, that's, that's a good thing to think about. Um, I hope it goes well. That is a lot of awards. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> Not safe for work. Tomorrow I am going to ruin his life. Man, where the, where the post with like the cat toys in the shoes? I, I missed this already. I have been with him for three years now. We planned on getting married when our lives settled down. I wanted to start a family with him, loved him more than anyone else in the world. I have sacrificed so much for him, moved away from my home, turned down jobs so I could stay with him, and stood by his side as he started to go back to school. I gave him my world. And then he cheats on me. I found out over a month ago, the scumbag got cocky, and I found out he was cheating on me with two different women. One is a TA at his university, the other his best friend's girlfriend. That's even worse! It's not even only a stranger, you're also breaking your best friend's heart. What? You're just a t freaking tornado in everyone's lives, what the frick? I, I am so here for the tea. You know, I'm not usually dramatic, but like... Oh my. I, I feel like I'm watching one of those drama-fueled TV shows like Love Island or something. <laughs> but like, anonymously over the internet. 
I am livid. I write this post choking back Venom. I loved him so much. He was my world, but now he will be the world I burn to nothing but ash. I pay for everything since he quit his job last year and go to school. I was more than happy to help him. I make enough to support us both. The only upside is the student loans are in his name with no connection to me. It will hurt to push the scumbag out to sea, but I will survive. I have held out for a month, enough time to create what I call the day his world burns. This is like a, the freaking movie build-up. You know when you're watching a series, when kind of you know that something is going on with the characters and you see the behind the scenes? This is that kind of thing, this is building up to season finale. Tomorrow we are hosting a party. I arranged for his family to come, but my family will sadly not be able to make it. I have packed everything valuable already and the suitcase is in the back of my car. My brother will come during the event tomorrow to take the car that is in my name that a dirtbag drives to my parents' house. The joint account, which is all my money anyway, is already empty. The event will be great, and he thinks it's for us to announce our engagement to his family. Holy! It's not only like a very public breakup. He just thinks it's heading in exactly the opposite direction. Oh, what a 180. Holy crap. What will happen in reality is I will announce my departure from his life. I have already taken a job out of state and will have lined up a new place to live. I will start by telling everyone what he is into. The screenshot of him asking his friends, girlfriends to, to, do, to do the, um, you know, when you know when you go to the bathroom and do number one, but you do that on your partner instead. And then the many other fantasies his degenerate mind came up with that will be passed around. I will hand him the notice to vacate as I have already broken our lease. We need to be out by the end of the month. I will then end off by informing him I have already reported he was sleeping with the TA for one of his classes the previous semester to the university. And I'm sad I won't see the fallout from that. His friend also has a message for him that I will deliver, informing him that his friend group will never want to see him again as well. And with that, I will leave. I will not look back. I will set his life on fire and walk away. Oh my holy crap. And it's so many levels of wrong. It's not only like the sleeping around at the, well, it's not a workplace, I suppose, but university place. So that's kind of inappropriate. You also cheated with your best friend's girl. You cheated on your own girl. And you think everything is heading in a fine direction with an engagement? I don't get it. If you depend so much on this person, I mean, taking, taking you know, the moral aspect and the emotions out of this, you know, why you would cheat in the first place. But even if you are a raging sociopath who don't care about anything emotionally, this just doesn't make any sense logically. Because you depend on this so much. And you still throw it. It's so stupid. Yesterday I was supposed to ruin his life repost. Oh, so this is the update. They say hubris is downfall of man. Yesterday I planned to ruin his life in front of his entire family. I worked for a month to create a scenario that would cut him the deepest. I patiently waited for the chance to storm out of his world in a blaze of glory. And then I hit the front page of Reddit. Realized I had fricked up when he was not answering my texts and had not shown up for hours after he told me he would be home. I had hoped it would be a happy accident, literally a car doing bad stuff before I had the chance. But no, I don't know how many men in the world are currently cheating on their soon-to-be fiancé with their best friend's girlfriend or TA. Yeah, it is very specific. So, so you know, if you see that and, and you are doing it, I would also assume that, you know, it's a bit of a coincidence. However, the one who mattered in my plan found my Reddit post. I called his mother and found out that he had run home to his parents. He told them we had a fight and we were probably through. Yeah, that's a... That's a generous way of putting it. I was, and I'm still livid at myself. His mother asked me what had happened as he left out a few details. Like everything. So I decided to tell her that he was cheating on me with a TA and his friend's girlfriend. I soon heard shouting before she hung up. I texted my ex that he had until morning to return my car before I reported it stolen and sent the screenshot of all his texts to his parents and siblings. My car was sitting in my driveway when I woke up. I contemplated sending the screenshots anyway, but his mother sent me a heartfelt text yesterday apologizing for her son's actions, and I feel they deserve to be spared from his degenerate actions. You know it's bad when it's the parent of an ex apologizing on their behalf. Then you know, <laughs> then you know it's really garbage. Oh, I and my father will be moving all my stuff today and I won't be coming back after that. I know you'll be reading this, you cheating frick. You're a cowardly piece of poo. Just know I'm not above sending out all the screenshots if you ever dare to come back into my life. Oh, and your ex-friends will know about your, your grossness and the intimate grossy gross. I can't control what they do with that information, so good luck with that. <laughs> I mean, it's not its not the kind of burning bridge thing that was hyped up, but pretty close. Pretty close. I mean, the result is about the same, I suppose. Oh, Jesus Christ. This is really if you take any drama piece I've ever heard about and just combine it into one big disastrous mess. It's like cheating and it's the best friend stuff. It's the inappropriate workplace things. It's the family things. It's the lying. It's the weird grossy stuff. It's just everything baked together. It's one big shit cake.
My husband told another woman that he loved her. I mean, there's, there's so much tea today, so much tea. Maybe I did a bad choice with my coffee. My husband is a great guy, puts his family first. He's only ever loved two women in his life, her and me. I know he loves me. We've been married for over 20 years. He has never strayed. His ex is dying. She has days left. She asked to see him as they were each other's first loves. He went to see her, talked about the 80s, held her hand, hugged her and told her that he always loved her. And I am okay with that. Edit. I am quite friendly with her daughter. It was her who reached out to me. Her husband is a great guy. He shook my husband's hand. They talked about the 80s, laughed a lot. Edit 2. Please stop giving me awards. He's the hero. We made soup last night, lentil and tomato, and a veggie curry. We're going to drop some off later. And yes, I stand by my post history the way I stand by my husband. Update. She's at peace now. He's devastated about taking comfort that she isn't suffering anymore. I did- Oh my god, I didn't show up to today's video to- to cry. Come on now, please, mercy, god, I can't- I can't- Emotional support demon, I need you now. Oh dear Jesus. This gives him the closure he needs. Good on your part. Most people wouldn't agree to this in my area. Jealousy consumes them. It's the second time I've seen him cry. I held his hand. Must have been such a bittersweet moment. I wish you and your husband healthy and happy lives. I don't- I don't even know- Oh my god. This is- so sad and so beautiful in the same way. And I'm so glad everyone is on the same side of this. It's a tragedy happening, everyone coming together, making sure people can move on, have closure, and doing what's right. It's it's really beautiful, in a way. In a bittersweet way, it's really beautiful. I didn't come here to be emotion emotional, please. Please. I didn't come here. I came here to laugh about drama and tea. God. Oh. I hired a male naughty worker for two hours just to hug me and hold me, and I gave him flashcards of what to say to me. I am a 22-year-old female. I am introverted. I have had one boyfriend who cheated on me eight months ago, and since then I found it incredibly difficult to socialize. Not that many people made an effort. I am simple. I don't have social media. I have a few friends, but they don't really speak to me much. I am average-looking, pretty insecure since my breakup. I am in college, and on weekends work a 12-hour shift at a fast-food restaurant to make ends meet. Yeah, this is a typical life cycle that where you don't really meet a lot of new people in a social context, you know, potential dating material. Also sounds like there is a lot of stuff to deal with. I don't know, I felt really lonely. So I know of a guy who works with me who told me his friend is doing naughty work. I found him on Facebook and he told me how much he charged. Also asked me a bunch of questions about my naughty health. I never planned on sleeping with him, I just didn't want him to find me weird. Anyway, we met at a hotel. I told him I didn't want to have naughties, I just wanted to be held and given words of affirmation and care. He agreed and I paid him. I gave him flashcards. They all said things like, I'm proud of you. You're doing so well. You're strong. Did you eat? Are you okay? I know you can do it, etc, etc. And he just held me until our hours was up. And then I bolted and I felt so ashamed and had to tell someone. But I don't speak to anyone, so here I am. Edit, thank you for all the kindest words and making me feel better and less ashamed. Yes, that's me immediately upvoting. I'm not good with words, so please know I appreciate it much more than you know. Thank you so, so much. Here in California, this actually exists. They're called professional cuddlers. That is amazing. Don't feel bad at all. This time of the year is cold, gray, and lonely for a lot of folks. There is nothing wrong with utilizing these services after a traumatic breakup. That is, oh. Honestly, that is an amazing service. That's like legitimately good. I mean, you have all kinds of services for, for people that hire, you know? Whatever it might be. And this is, this is really sweet. I know this post is a little bit old, but I hope you're doing well. Um, I hope you find what you're looking for and I hope you get over the breakup. Stuff like this can really affect you for a long time. At least in my experience, it's sort of like when you have a breakup or something, it takes maybe a month or two to get it out of your immediate chemistry, but then it can take so much longer for you to get over it where you're actually ready for the next thing or take more steps in your life, essentially. Best of luck. At least it sounds like you're taking steps to actually feel good and you're doing kind of what you want and that's a good sign. Um, wish you the best. I am a chef, and I've been living a lie about the quality and authenticity of my food. Oh, here we got some lighthearted tea, hell yeah! I am a personal chef for an upper-class family in the US with a multi-million dollar house, who go on many vacations every year. They claim they miss authentic European and Asian food after living abroad for several years. When I first started cooking for them, I made elaborate dishes that took hours to make. Finding the exact ingredients, examining each piece of carrot, potato, or chicken by hand. Finding the right brands and going to multiple grocery stores to find the exact Pinot Noir to make the perfect red wine sauce. You see, as a European, I nailed that. What? Do they speak French in Europe? Europe is a country. They didn't like it. 
I once messed up a dish and had to remake it really quickly, so I took a few shortcuts to make sure it was still tasty. A normally 12-hour dish, I made a quick version in less than 30 minutes, using vinegar instead of red wine. They said it was the tastiest thing they ever ate. It reminded them of the times they were traveling through some European mountains. Since then, I've realized I don't need to spend hours making all the food perfectly authentic. I stopped using expensive brands of wine. Sometimes I don't even use wine at all. Grape juice or vinegar or even sugar seems to taste just as good, if not better to them. I've saved tens of thousands of dollars and probably thousands of hours getting cheaper ingredients that have already been brined or marinated, and they absolutely love it. They even had me prepare larger meals for parties and events, but they claim it was authentic French or Italian food. <laughs> This is the white lies that I kind of enjoy, because they want something they taste good. It's not necessarily that their expectations is on par with reality, because they obviously think that some stuff that is cheaper is tastier. But then they can still brag about it to their guests, you know? Everyone wins, you know? It's, it's also kind of a beautiful lie in that way. They would ask me what kind of combination of flour I used to make the pasta that was so clearly handmade. Uh, it was uh, 99 cents bok pasta from... <laughs> This is amazing! <laughs> or it was clear I used a very particular piano for a quick de vie, uh, which I actually just added a little fruit juice with some vodka. Or that saffron really made a difference in my risotto when I really just used turmeric. <laughs> Or <laughs> how the food tastes so much better when sauces are freshly made with raw ingredients when it's really mayonnaise plus ketchup or some other dumb combination of common condiments. I just smile and nod. A part of me feels guilty, but not guilty enough to go back to making the more authentic versions that they would just complain about that costs me way more time and money anyway. I'm just worried that one day they will find out. But I've gotten away with it for almost eight years now. Sounds like you're a good cook regardless of where the ingredients come from. Or their tastes aren't as expensive as they think, lol. It sounds more like there's a disconnect, like they want the expensive stuff for, you know, the status and the show-off and the fanciness for the guests and that kind of thing, but their taste buds aren't necessarily in the mood for all the most expensive stuff. I mean, for God's sake, just like a, just like a nice slab of burger is sometimes the tastiest thing ever, uh, depending on what mood for food you're in. But in my experience, like, just... Just regular food, or like barbecue stuff or anything, can be so much tastier than just the most expensive restaurant you can find. Um, I suppose both have their charm, and uh, sometimes also more about the experience or the gesture or whatever it might be. But but yeah, it's uh, it's a, it's a bit of a <laughs> odd thing in the world, isn't it? I think my dad might have killed someone when I was a kid. One night, when I, 36F, was about 8 or 9 years old, mid-90s, my father took my little brother and I to Blockbuster to pick up movies. We left there, and my dad stopped at a corner store for some snacks he parked at the side of a building. He left me and my brother in the car while he ran in. On his way out, a man came up behind him and held something to his side. My dad pretended he was going to hand the man his wallet, but instead elbowed the man in the face and he fell to the ground. The guy got up and came at my dad with a knife, and my dad fought it away from him and stabbed him with it. Gonna censor a bit for YouTube's sake, but uh, it did damage and that kind of stuff, and, and the guy fell down. He left the guy on the floor writhing, hopped in the car and took off. For so many years, I thought this was a dream until my little brother mentioned it to me when asking if I remembered. We have never brought this up to my father, ever. I've always wondered what happened to that guy. But this was way before cell phones and stuff, so who knows. It's crazy the way it comes off from someone when they're saying things they've always been holding in. Sounds like your dad made the decision that he was going home with his kids that night. I have known about people handing the wallet and still getting hurt. I've seen similar stories like this a lot. Uh, for example, women going home alone at night, someone jumps them, and the jumpy gets hurt at the end of the day, or, or something even worse happens. And to me, it's kind of like they were the person who made it a dangerous situation in the first place. Because the person, the victim, doesn't know what their true intentions are or where they will end up, uh, even if they choose to comply with whatever demands they have. So, in my mind, it's kind of like it's always the jumpy's fault however it escalates because there's no way for that a person to know so yeah stories like that are surprisingly common it seems my son 22 admitted that he forced himself on someone at a party and my wife is covering for him oh no it's a messed up situation this took place two weeks ago my son was attending a friend's birthday party and came home drunk and only admitted to my wife that he forced himself on a girl at the party my wife told me the next day and i didn't know how to feel about it but she kept defending him and we had a huge fight about it she kept covering for him basically just giving excuses like him being drunk and then expressing guilt and regret i've been later told that the girl he forced 
forced himself on is the same girl he's been trying to get with multiple times but got rejected. I didn't react well. A couple of his friends who were there also tried to cover for him got officially banned from my home. My wife has been fighting with me about it as well and kept calling me names just for refusing to support her and supporting him. The house has been like hell ever since. I don't talk to her or my son and there's so much stonewalling when I try to speak to them and I'm sick of it. I don't know how things will play out going forward or how my son is going to fix this, but I'm just so mad I can't even sit at the same table with him and also my wife for that matter. What if it was your daughter? How would your wife react? I doubt she would say the boy was drunk and remorseful. A lot of women are blamed for stuff like this, even by their own mothers. Why were you dressed so slutty? You shouldn't have been drinking. I told you about it, and there was one thing on their minds. Why are we out partying instead of doing schoolwork? I have a feeling that this mother would be that type of person. It is possible. I suppose it's always difficult when someone you love and care about does something horrible, but it doesn't take away the horribleness. I've always found this a weird concept, of, like unconditional love. It's, it's weird to me, in a way, uh, because people can do things that will ruin the relationship and will remove your trust. It's always possible. Doesn't mean you should go around always be paranoid about people in your vicinity or shouldn't have their back for, for minor issues. But things like this, this is probably not the thing you should have their back on. And if you do, maybe that will even excuse them to do it again. And if you do love them, that will get everyone in trouble. It's like, it's just a freaking snowball and it's not something you should ever, ever, ever defend. It's so freaking gross. So freaking gross. Yuck. I am secretly my boyfriend's live stream viewers. My boyfriend just started streaming and he's pretty excited about it. He didn't buy a whole setup yet, but live streams whenever he's on. I streamed briefly and know how hard it is to get viewers. I open multiple private browsers on my personal laptop, work laptop and phone. This way I can have a stream going and it counts as multiple viewers. When he saw four, he was stoked. It's only four viewers, but he's so happy. There's very little in this world right now that can cause that genuine happiness and expression. I sit on the other side of the couch with the volume down on all devices and just pretend I'm doing schoolwork. That is so freaking sweet! And honestly, four viewers. You know, three viewers, three average viewers is the requirement to get affiliate on Twitch. Four viewers is really good. <sighs> that is so sweet. You see, there are so many instances in the world of like, it's not even white lies, it's golden lies. It's lies that just make the world better. It's weird in a way, but... That is so cute. My wife sleeps like a butthole. <gasps> to start, I love this woman more than life itself. She is the most selfless, supportive, and loving person I have ever met. Every single day I am with her, I am a better person for it. That being said, she sleeps like a butthole. We start all cuddled up like in a Disney movie, snug as a bug in a rug. And then, when she falls asleep, we begin the nightly turf war. That is our bed. She will often start with a classic starfish maneuver, spreading her arms and legs to establish a beach head to begin her insurgence. She will then begin to slowly rotate her body in counterclockwise fashion, until she is sleeping diagonally across the bed, establishing an ingress with her feet and legs. Then, with a classic pincer executed as ruthlessly as Hannibal himself, she brings her upper body forward, pinning me and leaving me exactly two inches for my insomniac ass to try to sleep on. I then try to slowly slide out of bed and sleep on her side, in which her reaction is to do the same thing five minutes later. I have tried everything! We bought a California king for a tiny bedroom. I established a green zone with pillows. I have even gently picked her up and slid her to her side to no avail. The thing is, I can't sleep in an empty bed anymore because I love this dummy so much! It has literally kept me up nights that I end up going to work with no sleep, and I can only sleep the next night out of sheer exhaustion. She also works hard, so I can't wake her up, but frick, I'm tired! There is only one solution! Bunk beds! Oh, so much more room for activities! <laughs> That is such a struggle! Oh my god! I'm like, I'm like getting weird ideas. You know how there are like these these sleeping things for your face if you like really bad snoring and stuff like that? Maybe that <laughs> I'm just thinking some kind of BDSM stuff but for sleeping. It's like, oh yeah, here you go, baby. I just uh, to tighten that up. There you go, stay on your side of the bed. <laughs> the nightly turf war? This is the kind of tea spilling I came here for. I installed the camera in the living room and caught my husband making out with a babysitter. <sighs> We're back to the, uh, to the depressing tea, aren't we? I've been having suspicions for almost four months since I hired this 17-year-old... Oh, God. Babysitter for my three-year-old daughter. I am a nurse working full-time when he works three nights a week and comes home to sleep during the day. I felt I was going crazy because something was off and he refused to ease my mind and answer questions I had. So I put a camera in the living room and saw nothing till four days when he and the babysitter were making out on the couch behind my daughter's back while she was watching TV. 
I felt like my entire world came crashing to the ground. I felt all kinds of negative feelings, including guilt, even though I just wanted to keep my job when he complained about me pushing him to the side. He started crying when confronted, tried to get me to listen, but I took my daughter and went to stay with mom. It's been a whole month now. The babysitter is gone and he's still crying about his slip up. He even went as far to say as the babysitter was the one initiating. Now that's, that's not an excuse. I mean, the age difference alone is enough to just be like, no. I feel like I'm done with him after this. He managed to make me feel guilty for not dressing up or giving him enough attention. Now, I do strongly believe I bear part of the blame in what happened. I feel disgusted in my mind and heart keep racing, but knowing how to deal with all this. He's begging for a second chance and his family are defending him against me. I forgot to mention our ages. I'm 31 and he's 34. So, literally twice the age of, uh, of the other person. Okay, that's... Uh Yikes. I guess it depends on where in the world it is, but in many places that's like, uh, ooh, ooh, ooh that's, that might not even be on the right side of the, of the law there. That's, uh, yikes. And even if it is on the right side of the law, that's like highly, highly morally yikes, even if that's the case. Holy crap. I've never liked this kind of reasoning where, you know, oh, people are busy or can't make themselves fancy for each other all the time. That comes with certain parts of adulthood. Now, of course, you should talk about it and make the best of the situation, but that's never an excuse to cheat. Like, if the relationship is really that bad, oh my god, you, you, you're you a bit frazzled after work, your only solution is to cheat. Like, no, no, that's that's insane. It's like it's like burning your house down because you found a spider, you know? It's probably not the way to go about it, even though a lot of Reddit comments would, would say that's the solution. I, I don't think that's the solution in practice. <laughs> and this is very much the same thing. It's a nuclear reaction to something that could be fixed with just talking and, and just planning it out, you know? It, it's not a cheating or relationship breaking issue at least at least not what it sounds like so no that's that's probably not the fault uh, to be honest and i think in general as far as i have seen in the world and my many years on this planet is that cheating is a fantasy i mean in this situation it's really gross on many levels but it kind of is a fantasy it's easy to get carried away in thoughts of like mysterious romance and running away when when you're you know stuck in a family situation taking care of babies arguing about dishes and stuff that you know tickling romance of, you know, none of that stuff has happened yet, and maybe there's this looker at the office and yada yada and the temptations and stuff. But the truth is, that's all it is. It's it's a fantasy. You know, no matter what kind of relationship you jump into, otherwise it's gonna completely ruin everything or it's gonna end up in the same place again. That's how real life works, you know? Relationships are a bit, a bit of everything, and that's kind of what comes with it. Cheating is a fantasy. Uh, don't get tricked by fantasies, I think. Fantasies are not worth giving up your life for. Now, if there's something wrong with a relationship, it's okay to break it off and, you know, move on with your lives and make the best of it. That's, that's something completely different, but this is not the answer. My wife gave me chlamydia. I am livid. The only person I have done naughty things with in the past five years has been my wife. I thought I had a bladder infection or something and scoffed when my doctor thought it was chlamydia. Well, here we are. I got the test results yesterday and I have chlamydia. Decided to start snooping and it didn't take long to find the text messages between her and her boy toy. My guess is that she doesn't even know she had it as well. She thinks I stayed up all night working. But little does she know I've already emailed her little lover boy's wife all the text messages. I warned the lover boy's wife that he's been sleeping with an infected woman and to get herself tested. I am still deciding on how to process this but wifey's going to wake up to my positive test results and the messages of her infidelity. The sun should be coming up in the next hour or two, and probably will be the end of this marriage. Update. I'll make a longer update eventually. I didn't confront her the morning. Boy Toy's wife ended up responding to me that she has not confronted her husband yet either. I'm getting my legal basis covered first. Probably a smart idea. You should just casually drop his name over coffee. So, I was thinking you should probably tell John he has chlamydia. <laughs> That's something I would expect in like a like a semi-bad American comedy series. Isn't that right, emotional support demon? Yes, indeed. Who needs to support emotions if we can just destroy them? <sighs> yes, indeed. My brother's flight got delayed 30 minutes and I am terrified to tell my wife. Let me explain. I haven't seen my brother in two years. He is coming to stay in the town I live in for a few days for work and has plans of staying at my house for one night of his several nights stay. We plan on getting a drink, a bit late to eat and then head back to my place to chill for a few. My wife is very abusive, manipulative and controlling. She has spent the last few days berating me for seeing my brother. It goes against her evil agenda of trying to separate me from anyone and everyone I love. Sounds like a weird thing to make a huge deal about. You seeing a family member first time after two years, you know, after pandemics and stuff, and this is their reaction? 
Yikes. She has been making comments about how fricked up it is that I expect her to put two kids to bed tonight by herself. Her compromise is that I get home by 11 and help her with the kids if they aren't already asleep. Okay. I've obviously been pushing back on this since she's a grown woman and can handle putting the kids to bed by herself once. Remember, I haven't seen my bro in two years. His flight's getting delayed by 30 minutes and thus delays my plans for 30 minutes and I will be abused and berated for it. I hate it. I'm terrified of this evil bitch, but I feel so stuck. Edit. Holy crap, this blew up. Thank you so much for the kind words and support. I knew this wasn't normal behavior, but I needed to hear it. And the people have spoken. My wife has BPD, possible narcissistic, and is very extreme in her responses to anything she doesn't like or agree with. Because of this, I have slowly been conditioned to let her have her way and abuse me. It's happened so subtly and right under my nose. Abuse against men is real, and I can't believe I let it get this far. I have taken steps towards a divorce, but pulling the trigger on it has been hard. The idea of not seeing my kids every day is terrifying, but as many as pointed out, they are better off to get away from this environment. As to people who told me to grow a pair or man up, I get it, and you're right. There is a responsibility on my part to establish boundaries. But the consequences of us attempting to do so at this point include her attempting to get me fired, trashing my office, etc. She goes there, and I am working closely with the therapist to navigate my way out with minimal collateral damage. Thank you to everyone who direct messaged me as well. I'll do my best to respond tomorrow. I'll post an update tomorrow as well. Thanks again, all. Those are kind of stories I've seen many times. When a partner is very obsessive, and that kind of stuff, simply breaking it off, especially when there are kids in the picture. But even if that's not the case, that doesn't mean you're just free right away. Very often they can get very obsessive or, you know, do their best to ruin everything or you will bear with the consequences for literal years afterwards just because they are already so obsessed and controlling and they can't take it as someone steps away from them. Best of luck. This situation really sucks. Lawyer up, bro. Document everything. Call the cops on her if she freaks out again and file a police report. Work with therapist and lawyer on crafting a case of full custody. That's probably a good idea. Thank you for the support. This post is getting a lot of ice and is the most confidence I've had in a while. Such a nasty situation. I hope it works out fine. And for the kids as well. Jesus Christ. I had a one-night stand and uh, she got pregnant. Ooh, the spice. When I was 25, I was a tattoo artist working with my best friends. One of them came in and we went bowling after work and I got drunk. Told him about the woman and our friend's wedding was super hot. And his girlfriend called her and asked her to come to the bowling alley. She was heavily tattooed and we hit it off instantly. Even though she was light years out of my league. So my friend and his girlfriend bailed and she needed a ride home. Naturally, I obliged and things went as expected. I hadn't spoken to her since, mostly out of fear she didn't want anything more than a drunken hookup. Sometime later, I get a phone call to come hang out and everything is chill. She lived with a mutual friend, so we just played games and drank. But she wouldn't. Weird, but maybe she's just not a drinker. At the end of the night, I go to leave and she walks out to the car and tells me she's pregnant. Catholic. And that we need to figure out what to do. I said nothing. I got in my car and left, and packed my bags for Mexico. It's been nine years. Our daughter is eight, her birthday is in two weeks, her sister is two, and their beautiful, intelligent, and clearly insane mother married me against all the protests from her family, and we've been the happiest we've ever been in my entire life. <laughs> Edit, both kiddos are mine. First one proven, second one as well. That is so beautiful! <laughs> Clarity, I never went to Mexico, just packed. Clarity point two. We were at a bowling alley right after work, got drunk, she showed up. I had quit drinking knowing she was coming and didn't want to be sloppy. We bowled for six hours, I then took her home. Was I drunk? No. Was it a smart move? No. Clarity part three. Catholic in a reference to her being against... Um, okay, okay, I see. Yeah, that makes, makes sense, I suppose. Most importantly, we're happy. Honestly, only one rude DM and one report about my safety, so in all, pretty good. Thanks for the support and well wishes. And also thanks for the laughs. Who who reports this? It's like a silly story about a couple got together 10 years ago. Ah, I need to report this for safety. <laughs> They're already married with kids. Calm down there, calm down there, my little, my little uh, white knight or whatever you're supposed to be. That is so sweet though, what a twist. They had us in the first half, not gonna lie. I left my wife because I'm sick of everything needing to match her aesthetic. I know it seems like a dumb thing to end my marriage over, but after dealing with this for so long, I am finally done. My wife and I are both in our 30s. We have a daughter. My wife has always been pretty into appearances, but it has never been this bad. She just wants things to look nice when people come over. Then she started an Instagram page for moms and got a massive amount of followers. About 400,000 since our daughter was born. That's a 
big account. It's not even like, you know, you know, a 10K follower account or something. This is legitimately big. Ever since then, I feel like I don't live in a house. I live in an Instagram photo shoot. There can't be any proof we actually live here. My wife stressed so much about things looking good that she doesn't actually enjoy the moment. She started the fight with me right after a daughter took her first steps because I had to put my drink down on the table behind her and it's all she could see and how she would need to edit it out of the video. She called me a selfish prick for putting my drink down on a coffee table to watch my daughter take her first steps. Because it ruins the background aesthetic? This is, this is probably not the priority that should be made. Oh dear, no. Our daughter's bedroom is just a mass of beige and cream. There's barely any toys in it, which was fine when our daughter was small, but now she's getting older. My wife refuses to buy her any toys that don't match her aesthetic. My mother took my daughter to the store and let her pick out a toy. She picked out this dollhouse from the show she watches and got all the dolls and furniture. And my wife told her that she had to keep it at my mother's house because there's no place for it at home. She absolutely had room for it. My wife is convinced I'm leaving for another woman. I'm having an affair, etc. But I'm not. I just can't keep feeling like I live in a museum where I can't touch or move anything. I can't even build a blanket fort with my kid without my wife flipping out that they're decorative blankets that she folded in a special way. I am not going to force my daughter to live in an aesthetic. Editing in. I've tried to encourage her to seek professional help. She insists that it isn't a problem and she doesn't need any therapy. This is absolutely horrible. I mean, it's not the same thing as being a family vlogger, which is... A freaking questionable industry in the first place based on what I've seen on YouTube and Instagram. Like, fam. God, mm, mm, very questionable. But in my case, for example, I have one dedicated room where I do things, you know? I also have a home studio, but it's this. It's this. Everything else, normal place. Normal place. It's only this place I got bananas with walls and that kind of stuff and put up everything. Aside from that, normal place to live. Completely normal. That's probably the healthy way of doing it. I also feel so bad. Like, childhood is so magical in so many ways. Like, pillow forts. Amazing. I have such fond memories of pillow forts. And then you take that away because of an aesthetic on an Instagram page that that may, might not even be monetized. God damn. And even if it is monetized, it's still a disgusting priority. Oh, dear God. Can you imagine when you get to the age of 18 and you're like, the frick happened to my childhood? And, and your mom is like... Sorry, hon, you didn't have a childhood, but we have these Instagram posts that look really aesthetic. I think there is a fine line as a creator where you should share a bit of personal stuff because you, it makes you relatable and it makes it seem genuine. Not only for marketing purposes, but at least in my opinion, it makes it more fun because you can personally connect to what you do. When you tell your anecdotes and videos or life stories or lesson or whatever it might be, it makes it more real. But it's also important not take it too far. You don't have to put out your whole life there, you know? And especially when it comes to family members and that kind of stuff who haven't consented to being on camera themselves, you're putting them in front of a very large audience who you don't actually know who they are. And I've seen some real horror stories about this, and it is worth taking into consideration. The internet is an amazing but scary place. I have a friend who is a mommy influencer. Well, had. I couldn't stand seeing how she curated her feed over her children's happiness. All of the happy moments were fake. The kids were mad posing for picture after picture. She would hide the mess, bribe them with treats, get the perfect curated picture for her feed, then proceed to ignore them and interact with her followers. It blew my mind to see the behind the scenes of what looked like a picture perfect life. At least by leaving her half of the time, let's hope she can actually be allowed to be a messy kid who has some fun. That is so sad. And at this point, I'm gonna be honest, I'm surprised why they don't just fake it, you know? The entire thing is just for show and curated and bullshit anyway. Why don't you just make a complete bullshit blog if you really want a family blog? You know, you can just have child actors or green screens or whatever. Why, why do you have to like invade your life if it's just gonna be lies anyway? Just make it up! Who gives a shit? I have commented this before, but I'll never forget this cute little girl at a winter park. Her mom bought her a very fancy, very over-the-top hot chocolate out of candy canes, a mountain of whipped cream and marshmallow snowman, sprinkles, etc. The little girl was so excited, but the mom had her posing for several pictures with it, and by the end the girl only had enough energy to keep fake smiling as the hot chocolate melted. And then she and her mom had a sip of it and threw it out, as it all melted and not impressive looking anymore. Then the mom sat there, using her phone while ignoring her daughter who started climbing over decorations. I am assuming to post on social media. It was very sad to witness. This is the kind of thing that would be perfectly fine if you're like 20 years old and you don't have kids. You know, if you care that much about your Instagram feed or whatever, you know, go for it. I, I think it's a bit vapid and vain and kind of BSy myself. I'm not particularly interested, but you know, 
you do you. If it genuinely brings you happiness, like, sure, go for it. But when it's prioritized over the happiness of a child, like, that, that's the thing. When you become a parent, you're no longer numero uno. That's... That's, that's the catch. My late boyfriend's memorial picture that his family posts whenever they talk about him was his reaction to my boobs. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. The picture is beautiful. He had glowing blue eyes and the most beautiful smile. The sun was shining on his golden blonde hair. He looks like an angel in the picture. The smile that had been used in every Facebook and Instagram post was induced by me flashing him to get a nice picture. I forgot about it entirely until I saw an old message to a friend I had sent the pictures to before. So now, the picture that is mostly posted of him on his family social media is his genuine reaction to his girlfriend's boobas. I think that is exactly how he would have wanted to have been remembered. That is so beautiful. <laughs> that is amazing. How awesome that you still get to share this inside joke with him. Seriously, it's almost like I feel him laughing with me. That is so, it's so funny and so sweet. That is so good. You know when they say, you know, you keep living on and that kind of stuff? You live in the memories of your loved ones and that kind of thing? This is what I'm thinking. This is so good. It's so good. Not safe for work. Sent an adult toy in order to stop getting junk mail from family. It has been almost two years since I went no contact with my family. Mutually decided on my dad between the two parties. Since I am gay and they are not accepting and are very much of the mentality of do as we say and obey and take our mental abuse because family. Woo! Yikes. Yeah, I, I can see why the no contact thing is a val valid option here. Jesus Christ. So ever since they have been contacting me via Hallmark greeting cards for major holidays, saying things that they do not mean and not respecting my boundary and all always putting how they hope I will find my way back to them. Yeah, it's always about you adapting, isn't it? It's never about like, hey, we have we have been thinking about it for a couple years and we've finally stopped being assholes. It's like, no, 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 you have to change and, you know, come back to the family. Great. I usually never respond, but this year I got fed up, so I might have been a little petty. For I mailed them a gift of a uh, adult toy and had attached a note that read, Sorry I forgot to get you a present last year, but I still thought to give you this adult toy this year so you can frick yourselves like you fricked me over my whole life. I hope to never hear from you again from insert my name a stranger. I made my therapist astounded with that one and almost laugh on the floor. <laughs> All I really expect from this is for them to leave me alone and let me heal without any extra reminders of them and the trauma they cost me since the two plus years is still not enough and I am deprogramming all the bad things they broke and taught me. The learning things that people taught you in your life that were big parts of your life is really difficult. It's re It takes forever if it ever goes away completely. It, it really sucks. Um, I wish you the best of luck. And this was a really fun way of giving them a final middle finger. I, I wish you the best in finding people around you that love you for who you are and building a new family. Because uh, family isn't always the people we happen to be born with. We, you know, it's pretty normal to build your own family after a few years, so... I hope that is the case for you as well. Wish you the best of luck. Well, laddies, lasses and lassos, I do hope you enjoyed this video a little bit different. Let me know what you thought down in the comments. If you want to see more of this kind of stuff, or if you prefer more snappy meme stuff, or want a combination of both. And remember to check out the little body available for just a little bit longer. Super beautiful. And I will see you in the next video. Take care, you beautiful beans.